back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to round out the day, round out the week. What fun, what we, bleh, bleh, bleh. we've got one <laughs> final match for you about to begin. It's the Guangzhou Charge versus <laughs> the LA Terrain. I can talk. This is my job. This is what I get paid to do. <laughs> Wolf, take it away. All right, so I want to talk about Atlanta. First of all, they come off of a win against the NYXL. You and I yes. were lucky enough to cast that match, the win streak for regular season, broken for NYXL, no longer undefeated. And the Atlanta Reign just really had their number. They were able to isolate, identify, that Mono was overextending oftentimes. And everybody knows, like, the elephant in the room is that New York did not play as well as they usually do as well. But this, that doesn't, we can't take anything away from the achievement that is defeating them. And the Atlanta Reign come off of a massive win. And I think that makes them big favorites coming into this series as well. I mean, you've dethroned the king. It doesn't make you the king, you know? The Atlanta Reign is not on top just because they beat NYXL, but yeah. Let's zone in on one player in particular. I want to talk about Erster, who I think is actually the best player on this team right now. And if you look at his rankings in terms of Brigida's lead wide on a team that until just recently was at a pretty negative record, they're very high. In terms of final blows, he's second on Brigida, right? So this guy is making the plays, he's getting those you know, kills confirmed in a lot of hectic team fights. His care of his teammates, especially the tank line, is top notch. And we already know he's got a wide array of DPS players that he can play. Yeah, or so DPS heroes, I should say. <laughs> it's been a really good run for him so far. Guangzhou, however, really rough stage thus far after a pretty successful stage one. Uh, we got to see them play against the other Zhou team in the Spark just yesterday. So have those back-to-back -back matches. But this was the first time in a while that the charge have actually looked alive. Yeah, and Eileen is playing a lot of Doomfist. And he's kind of been one of the first players in this league to lead the charge in terms of running that hero. Uh, no pun intended. We've seen it from a, a quite a few more players in the league right now as well. And it's a new trend that Doomfist is back on the menu for a lot of these squads. So exciting to see. And I think we will see it more in this match against the Atlanta Reign. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised at all if we have more of that coming out. Guangzhou, of course, able to avoid that longest map loss streak. So luckily for them, they do avoid that. But now they're going to be looking to pick up some wins against the Atlanta Reign. We'll see if they can do it. So let's go ahead and bring out the first squad. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Atlanta Reign. Standing tall after a victory against one of Overwatch League's st most storied teams in the NYXL and doing it in spectacular fashion, nearly getting the 4-0. No team has ever been able to do that to NYXL, and that record still stands. But to take that win, you know, it was historic for this season. This is an expansion team of mostly Western players, and they've accomplish something that's real and and we saw it happen just this week so off the back so that this team's confidence levels have got to be through the roof yeah looking very good dogman there still lacking a bowl cut maybe one day it'll actually happen <laughs> might not be today we'll find out as time goes on but let's go ahead and bring out their opponents ladies and gentlemen it's the guangzhou charge You mentioned it earlier, the charge had such a successful stage one. They were able to even bring the Titans to a fifth game. Everyone remembers that series. You know, it wasn't that long ago. A lot of people were saying this team looks stronger than everyone anticipated, despite having so much diversity and at times three different languages across the roster in terms of primary speaking languages. But yeah, this stage, they have really fallen off. And this is the stage you think they do well in. They've got players like Hoppa on the roster, Eileen, who can play DPS now, I mean, happy. happy on Widow. You know, this is the stage you think the charge would excel in. Everyone was saying, look at how good they look in stage one. But when the meta shifts, this team is going to be on an upward trajectory. Strength of schedule is something we have to factor in here. It has been a tough stage in terms of their opponents, but they're reliant now so much on Eileen's Doomfist, and it's been hit or miss, as Doomfist is. If you get the hits in, you get the picks, or you get the shields to fight longer and get the, uh, you know, the ultimate, then you're going to end up being in a good place. But sometimes it does fall flat. I think they will rely on this with Eileen being in the starting six today as well. Yeah, I mean, putting a lot of time onto this hero as well with the 1705 there. So what, you know, one of the upper, uh, one of the larger times that we do have for Doomfist investment. We'll see if it's going to land today for them to be able to pick off the members of the Atlanta Reign or if they themselves will come out on top. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map set presented by Toyota. See where we're headed. So Busan will be kicking things off. That is a very good boon if you're looking forward to some Happy Widow and Hanamura, Kings Row and Rialto 
to round out the rest of this series. Hanamura definitely the best map for Doomfist right now as well on point A in particular. So have to imagine that Eileen will be sticking around as we head into Assault. Daco starting here, something we didn't really talk about too much. I saw FRD in the hallway. Uh, there's always the possibility he will come in later on in the series as we did see them swap uh, a bit when we had that series against NYXL. So exciting to see how this series develops. For the first map though, where, you know, often we do see Happy on Widow in Mecha Base, it's actually just gonna stick with Azaria because there's too much of a risk that if you lose the first fight, you're gonna get behind an Azaria ult charge. Yeah, I mean, gonna be on that break as well. Big kill denying, coming out from Dogman, catches three, and that leads to Rio going down right at the front of the fight. Eileen and Happy trying to hold out here, but stun comes through, and Happy will be taken down. Erster setting up yet another kill, getting that additional stagger. That's the and difference the point maker. Locking, they'll be able to snag. The heal ban there, or heal deny, I should say, that's what it's called in Korean, is heal ban, <laughs> is what uh, is what sets them apart. And there's a lot of styli di stylistic differences right now across the league about supports. We're seeing some teams run a lot more Batiste. We're seeing Ana over the Zen. Guangzhou's staying classic here, but when you hit those big grenades, you know, that's a big problem. Papa's got to be there to absorb that. Yeah, two more. Getting anti there as the charge, trying to make their way over onto the point. And there's one contestant at the moment looking for that very fast flip. Indy Bay, beat down Happy, takes it dangerously low. We'll go for it, looking for the stun there, not able to find it. It's going to be a, a transforced out of shoe. With the grab getting ready to come up now at 20% for Baby Bay, that can really cost them dearly as the fight continues to go on and on. Shadow's going to be coming down, poke, poke, right up into the front, going to be snatched up by this grab. Gravitron search goes low, Rio manages to find the kill. Now the Shatter online can hold that likely for the next fight because they already clean up two kills. Charge looking for the flip, and that's a rain delaying for a bit longer here as they approach 50%, but they will go for the full reset. And when we shift the conversation back to the supports again, the lack of a Zenyatta, the lack of a Transcendence, is what shows here when Happy hits the grab. You don't have the answering support ultimate with Masa sitting at 80%. So the aggressive grab from Happy, knowing there's no counter support ultimate, can be used early in the fight. You can get a fast turnaround like this. So, you know, there are trade-offs on both sides. We'll push up right into the face of Rio, taking him lower and lower. That shield getting beaten and battered. They're unable to displace him. They can't quite finish him off, but they will force another Transcendence out of Shu. He's building these up pretty rapidly. Jar nearly with that sound barrier if they want to continue the fight as well. Shatter comes out from Rio, but it goes straight to the shield of Poco, so not going to be able to find anything. Bombs coming out from both sides. Like ships passing in the night, but Tacos is going to be the one coming up with kills. Nets himself a double. Dogman there will be able to continue some of the fragging as they clean them up, so not even able to match the percentage right now for the charges they lose. No, right. And they're also significantly behind in ultimates as well. They used everything in that fight, notably the support ults that they would want to use to try to build another grab here for Happy, get him into position to use it before Dogman had trance. This is all, they're all about 10% away of where they need to be for that to happen. And so now Atlanta Rain can just play aggressively, get Baby to another grab in this choke. They can walk to meet the charge because they're not worried about any ultimates here. And Dogman's gonna have the transfer Happy's grab when he finally gets it. So they have all the answers. Yeah, looking really good for them. Nearly find the pick there on his shoe. A little more crucial members that they could take out. Shatter coming through. Knocks a couple to the ground, Rio as well. Gonna get stunned up and only able to find a kill. Trans gonna be used ahead of time here by Dogman. His grab is now available for Happy. See if he can get the setup. Grab will be coming through out from Baby Bay to start things off. Happy taking a lot of damage, trying to survive as we hit over 90%. Trans comes in from shooting along, get the fight, keep the charge in this. As they get ready to force out that overtime, still not seeing the grab being invested from the side of the charge as Happy continues to get tagged up. Trying to hide in behind Rio's shield. Grab now going to be used. He's at 100 charge. Daco immediately going to be melted out of the mech. Now Masa and Erster both going to be taken down. Seems like the fight is looking very good for the charge. They should be able to get this flip. Now, the flip comes through. But the bigger question is, how do they stop the next push from the rain? How do they hold this for 60 more percent? They have the ult lead right now, and they have one and a half support ultimates. Shoes will build if they can win the first fight. He's not gonna have time to poke, and there's not a lot of range for him to poke. If they play aggressive, they might be able to win the fight through the shatter. But if they fail that, then they lose the map. So they're gonna play a little bit more safe and try to get Shu line of sight to get that trance. That's a good shot here. Oh, Chara gonna be taking down the whip shot out from Erster to just snipes him in midair. That's a huge pick. Yeah, now no sound barrier. He will be able to rejoin. 
very quickly as a Lucio, but Graf's still gonna be coming in. Catches two on the side, pushing forward right up into the faces, looking for the kills. Bob's gonna be landing up top, so not gonna be the best angle for Daco as he tries to make it back into the back. It will not be able to do so because Eileen shuts him down. Responding Graf now in from Happy. Jara rejoins, instantly drops the beat. C1 out from Masa as well, but the tank line on the side of the Atlanta Rain are getting shut down. Long show charge, so grinding against them, will be able to get this flip. 24% to go. All right, so Shu now going to need to build another trance here. Last time they had this similar situation, at least they had the barrier there. Chara died, so they won the fight without it. So we know it's possible because it just happened. He came back later with the barrier. Chu is going to be trying to get the last 30% of this because that's the healing ultimate. He's going to have the Dog Dogman and Pokepo, or excuse me, Dogman and Masa don't have. So that's how they can win this through the heals, but he needs to get that last 30%. Well, right now, somebody's got to tag over onto the point. Haven't seen it happen yet. Into the back goes Dogman's up. Dead. That's going to be Dogman getting taken down, as you say. Shu, it will come with the critical snipe as he approaches that next friend sentence. Happy will be on the exchange as Baby Bay nearly has his grab ready to roll. Shadow comes in from Rio. Not going to hit them too much other than Erzstrike. Tries to get the pin, but Daco dives in front of the Pokemon. Huge take it race! Rockjo charge, looking forward for the flip, comes in. They manage to get it back, Kevin. Now, it's in the favor of the Atlanta Rain as they try to close this one out. The grab comes in. Up on Shu going to be locked up, but no one is there to get the kills. Erzstrike left on the far side of the wall, going to be taken down. Uh, and nearly knocked off the back. The charge trying to get the flip coming back through, and no one can step forward to contest this. The OT bar gonna start plummeting very rapidly, as you can see. Dogman can't even fade in in time. The charge will be able to take Mega Base. Great charge from Rio on the Reinhardt there to get that pin. They got the kills on everyone except Baby Bay. They knew he would be unkillable, and they didn't have the damage to take him out, so they killed everyone else. When the grab came through, there weren't any members left on the rain, and the Guangzhou charge is able to turn things around in that moment. When Baby Bay grabs, there's not enough damage. He alone doesn't have the damage to get those kills. Dogman comes back on the Moira because he got picked. He knows he's not going to build a trance. He knows he's going to be behind. He knows that on the other side, Shu has that transcendence available. They lost their Zenyatta versus the enemy, or sorry, they lost their Zarya versus the enemy Zenyatta. So they had no damage, but they had the abilities, like charge, Are we for doing example. This? We're doing this. I think so. But they had the ability to get that pin kill. And All it looks right. like we are seeing Torbjorn, yes. So Torbjorn, Sombra, and Soldier 76 for the Guangzhou Charge. Need to get this turret set up. Make sure that Hotba is going to be able to lock some people down. Stop them from getting over to the point. With that nice bit of damage coming through already. Members of Rain, he got a lot of damage. Masa going to be hacked out. Happy's got a great angle. Throws in those Helix Rockets. Unable to find a kill. The focus is on the turret, so this gives Happy free reign to do damage. But the shield's now angled to prevent that. He's finally breaking through, though. Yep, Rain over here. Have to commit. On the corner, Poco -po going lower and lower. Barrier's gonna be broken, and he is just gonna get melted down. Turret and Rio, everybody just beaming in onto that Reinhardt, so they find the elimination. You have to hold the barrier up the whole time, and it's just free reign for Happy to take it out. He's gonna get rezzed as well here. So Baby Bay just trying to get ult charge here, but this is not gonna be a, a fight they can take. The point will go to the charge. You need to be expect. careful not to overextend here, too. Well, Hop up manages to find the kill on a baby baby. He gets stunned up, goes low, and gets taken down. EMP going to be coming out. That's going to find Pokepo and Erster. As the kills get ready to roll through. And mind you, we still have not locked down the point for either side. Cap has not run through. Erster, however, not going to be able to survive. So it seems like the charge will finally be able to snag this one. They didn't end up losing too many members of the rain, and they also held on longer than I thought they would. Had that gone a little bit differently and they had lost Baby Bay, for example, then suddenly this is a horrible position for the rain. Oh, they were fighting over a point they weren't going to be able to take. But in this case, Baby Bay actually got a ton of ult charge and they can engage with this. The problem is the charge are all split in different directions. It's going to be hard to get a good grab here. If you can even get close enough to the numbers to grab them, do you see Supercharger placed here already. They're going to be taken down. Rio, oh, just going to get melted. Everybody pushing forward. They managed to find the Orisa. Sleep comes in on Urster in the back with the rally rolling as they try to get the kills. Hotbot just gonna be pushing forward, looking for those right clicks. Will be able to take him down. They got the flip though. The Charger are gonna have to collapse back onto this point. What the Charge do well is they avoid fighting. They have the range damage, but actually getting onto a point against a very tight knit composition like what the Rain is running is very difficult without an EMP. Eileen's still 12% away. Yeah, nearly has that one built up. Expect to see maybe the EMP into the Nano Visor coming through from the Gronzo Charge just to try to melt everybody down. Baby Baker only hacked out. That's going to expire as the shield start ticking back up for him. Trying they to stay need safe. to be decisive here. I mean, Popo just so low. That's going to be the Nano Visor coming through. Transcendence in from Dogman. So taking anybody down through this healing is going to be very difficult. But as I said, it's just going to get two. So never mind. Trans expires. And instantly the kills start rolling in. 
weren't able to play a route away from the line of sight here of Happy. And they get punished for it. Now Pokepo and Daco both going to be taken down. Atlanta Rain have the reset, try to come back in. They're still holding on to that grab. I don't know if this was good enough for the charge, though. That's the thing that I'm worried about because Atlanta Rain come back with ult advantage. And they saved the Nano for this visor. That's why we did see Rio die previously when he could have been saved otherwise. They're going to have another attack visor, but they won't be able to use it during the grab and the support ults. This EMP has to delay. And so far, they don't see Eileen. Yep, waiting in the back. We try to hound. The healers here. Doesn't get Masa. That's good. The shield's coming through, so as you say, Masa not gonna get caught, but the vault core's gonna be coming through. Pumping out Magma here on the point. Bomb into the back. Daco not gonna be able to find anything, but makes it back into the back safely. As I say that, no, the hack actually comes through. Eileen sets up for it, and they manage to find the kill. It was looking like he was gonna be surefire set, but no, does get taken down in the charge. Continue to win the fight and maintain control. Shoe scoops a double. Okay, so the same points still stand in terms of the rain having ult advantage here with the grab they have. This tack visor, he's gonna look, well, it looks like he was looking for a flank here to maybe catch them off guard. Very risky to try that, if, as any soldier player will tell you. You look like a genius if it works. But anyways, this time they don't have the EMP to delay. They don't have the EMP to disrupt. So this should be Atlanta Rain getting in here and making this grab happen. They go to where Happy was standing. He's already repositioned though, so they're gonna take some damage, some crossfire on the way around. Actually, good delay here from the charge. Well, Rio gonna be alone on the point. Supercharger still waiting. Lobbed in from downtown. The grab catches him. No way to take that one away from them without a D.Va. So that's going to lead to several kills going over to the Atlanta Rain as they break over the point. Nearly forcing out the OT at the moment here is the charge. We'll be able to hit that figure right as the flip comes through. Their plan, the charge's plan with that reposition where they were all standing back, they knew that eventually the grab was going to hit them at range was to delay for two things, the 99% that they hold currently and the EMP Eileen is 15% away from. With the EMP and the TAC visor and no support ultimates to counter that, there is a way that the charge can take this point back and win this map. Easier said than done, but that's the win condition here. The Farah as well, there's not a, really enough time to build a barrage. It's just for the extra damage so that Happy can finish these targets off when he comes in with a flanking attack visor. EMP needs to be built here, though. We'll have it. Just needs to nail this one. Pushing it right up towards something. The fade comes in. Masa not going to get caught. He was just around the corner. He's still Doesn't under some Daco. pressure. Doesn't Daco. hit Daco. Yep, has the defense matrix. So flip over to the side. Happy finds another target. Manages to get rid of Pokpo. Daco going to be throwing the bomb up into the air this time. Looking for the flip back or the rain. But Dogman's going to be taken down by Shiro. So charge looking good. Now Masa and Earth are no supports in the fight for the Atlanta rain. Just going to be some tanks. And Pokpo here with a shatter and a dream. But I think this is going to turn into a nightmare here as he tries to approach. And it's just getting cut down by Shu who nearly has another transcend, it's just for good measure. You heard the shatter, get ready to roll through, but Pokemo dies in the middle of it, and the charge, they will be able to take Busan. Very impressive stuff here from charge. Even though Daco didn't get taken out, the attack visor still finds the kill on Pokemo. Everyone is so split up on the rain, and in that chaos, the Guangzhou charge composition absolutely wins out. A fantastic start for the charge. Let's see if the rain can tie us up when we come back from the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.
Welcome to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. Our old friend Hanamura Point A presented little difficulty for Gray and the Paris Eternal as they utilized a perfectly timed bionic grenade from Ana to neutralize the entire Florida Mayhem healing output. The Eternal seized their advantage and steamrolled the point. Is, oh, that's a great bionic grenade, great grenade! Anti-healing down all over Florida and immediately the hard point not so hard oh. anymore. That was a stop. Wow, what a beautiful setup from Gray. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Guangzhou Charge able to start things off with a victory 2-0 on Busan. Let's rain as we get ready to move into Assault. Going to be looking to tie this up. Happy, you know, on the Soldier. He was the MVP of that last round, getting those Helix Rocket kills when he needed to, breaking the barriers, and adding that extra layer of disruption on top of the Torbjorn turret so you've got threats in different angles. His tack visor usage was well-timed, got the nano for the first one that was really impactful. Second one, obviously, tougher to use with Daco in his face, but he still managed to survive and get that kill on the Pokepo. And it's a new look for Happy, because Happy has been a two-dimensional player in his past. He has been a Widow player and a Zarya player, and that is about it. Though we're now starting to see him branch out further into the DPS line, back, you know, further into uh, the Soldier 76. He would play McCree on occasion in the past as well in Contenders Korea, but uh, it's cool to see this guy get to showcase his skills in a meta that's constantly evolving. And a lot of these Chinese teams right now are running a little bit of everything, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see what they have prepped for us here on the attack. Uh, so neither of these teams has played this map yet this season, so somebody gonna be looking to pick up a victory. Or maybe it ends on a draw and no one has a win. <laughs> Who knows? We'll figure it out as the charge move in on the attack. Rio just going to be scouting with the Sombra for now. Daco's position, he's up in the room there to get some additional information and perhaps to collapse on whoever poked out first. He does play it safer, though, and backs off. We saw Jaehong use that room yesterday to get a big bio grenade. Yeah, very sneaky plays from Jaehong. A lot safer as the D.Va in this case to do that, since you can just fly away. Sleep Dart not going to find a connection. Jumping up here onto the high ground, though. Rio just looking to zap and poke out where he can. Oh, no, he misses the jump into the room! And that's going to be the punish. Urster gets the shield bash instantly afterward. They get the kill. Full reset. But it's actually Happy who eats Zarya ult turret. It's always the worrisome thing when someone dies in a fight, as if you're the attackers, that the defending Zarya ends up surging massively ahead. In this case, it's actually the attacking Zarya who still leads that. Dogman Ooh, very aggressively up front. Yep, Bio's going to be able to connect on the two people. Going to lead the kills there at the ball. But as I say, as I say that, I lead. We'll get taken down as this is a, uh, this is a very aggressive chase forward from the Atlanta Rain. The reason why we see three tanks, three supports in this match is because tanks do a lot of damage, they're difficult to kill, and healers heal a lot, right? But when you remove the healing factor to the tanks, they don't live as long in the mirror. They get taken out. You have to retreat. You get into a positional disadvantage. So these bio grenades and Dogman, super impactful, and it's eating a lot of the clock for the Guangzhou charge here on their first attack. Yep, Nano, really all they have to rely on. We'll just go ahead and toss that one straight onto Rio as he jumps up onto the high ground. Gonna build up for that Primal Rage, which he is getting very rapidly. Good bio as well, out from the charge. The nice three, that's gonna lead the Masa getting taken down. Darkman trying to survive, but he won't be able to do so. Uses the Nano just before going down, but Rio comes up with a double, taking out both supports. Now gonna be joining over onto the point with the rest of his squad. For a brief moment, sees a couple extra people, so hey, I can get more ult charge from that. Jumps forward, now just trying to stay alive, which he will be able to do. Nako. Trying to retreat as the mech, but he's going to have to reset. Get ready to defend B. It's been a long time since we've seen Nano Boost used as an engagement tool with Winston's. And in this case with Rio, he comes in, isolates them into a room. Baby Bay doesn't have the ability to grab in this situation. And then Shu hits the follow-up bio grenade while they're all clumped up because of the primal rage. And it was just really well timed, the bio grenade and the Nano. And then afterwards, you see Happy grab just to secure the point. They don't have the advantages required to get a double cap here. So this is very likely just going to be a eco push where you try to build grav. Unless Baby Bay got picked, that would have changed everything. Yeah, that would have been pretty bad, but he does manage to stay alive. He's trying to farm up some energy here. Charge not really biting. They see the bubbles come out. Just stop firing. Push up onto the high ground here from Hoppa, trying to disrupt them. Tipping down, very to leave. Grab comes in from Mini Bay as well, looking for the kills. Shield needs to be taken down, they try to find it. We'll manage to get the pop out here on Hoppa's mech, and that is going to be Rio taken out. He answers one back onto Erster. The Guangzhou charge likely can't stick around for too much longer here as Eileen 
is going to be trying to escape. When you have this much time bank and your opponent has ult advantage and they've already used a few of their critical ults in this choke, I find it surprising that Shu and Char would su commit support ultimates there. Hafla would commit the self-destruct because you're very unlikely to win this fight. And now you don't have the advantages you would have had if you had just held them and lost the fight anyways. So a uh, puzzling choice there, especially the sound barrier from Chara. Daco going to get slapped. We'll come back up, though. So we'll remain safe for the moment. Dogman's racing to see if he can get transcends in time for this grab. Yeah, nearly does have it, 25%. Left to go as Happy gets the grab online. Popo already dangerously low, trying to get topped up as Riley comes through from Urster. Eileen matching on the other side. Grab gonna be thrown down straight onto the lantern. Managed to get a catch. And a lot of members here on the side of the Atlanta Rain, and that's gonna be Popo and Baby Big both taken down. Happy nearly picked as well, but now Dogman comes in with a transcend. It's just a bit too late to have that one ready, but will help them delay for a little bit longer. Zako gets popped out of the mech. Popo gonna be respawned, coming back in, has a shatter online, but needs to nail it, because right now the charge rapidly ticking up on the point. Two ticks already gonna be grabbed. Still 340 left on the clock, and no one can tag. They force them back towards the spawn doors. Support it away. not required here, Achilleos. It's just gonna be the grab right into the lantern there. Everybody gets caught. Dogman's at 95% of a trance. He did not build in time. And the Guangzhou charts still keep the good time bank. Yep, 341 for them. Looking pretty good. Let's see what the rain can get when we come back. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The charge looking alive today. Atlanta Rain stumbling a bit as they do give up point B here on Hanamura with 341 left in the time bank for the charge. So now need to have uh, one hell of an attack. Certainly true. See if they can make it happen. Eileen not running the Doomfist either, so just sticking to more traditional compositions here in terms of what they were running to break A and then get, uh, you know, B. Of course, guys, we do have the Atlanta homestand coming up in July, so make sure go to atlrain.com and pick up your tickets. And I think it's some VIP packages as well. Get yourself a swag bag, some meet and greets, so you can walk up to Dog Man and remind him that he doesn't currently have a bowl cut, <laughs> as he promised. <laughs> well, look at this. Never bunker, forget. Bunker composition with the May to supplement, so you'll have the ability to What's really cool about this May is it's not about freezing people, it's not about building a blizzard, it's about isolating the front line who's trying to peek in or, and or dive your uh, Bastion. So the May can wall one target off and then Hoppa obliterates them with the uh, you know damage that he's got on the Bastion. We'll see if he can isolate anyone. The Atlanta Rain might choose a composition that's a little bit difficult to lock down, like the one they're building right now, which is dive. Um, you can still get locked up in this. Oh, they're changing it up. Okay. There we go. Times here, but they will eventually settle on Sombra Genji Dive. This time, the May becomes more of the peeling, freezing, slowing hero in terms of peel, because you're not going to get very many opportunities to lock down a Genji, for example. Push up over the top here for Erster. 
Looking for Happy. Unable to get a connection with the Shuriken so far, though. Beautiful view of Genji poking up over the top here, trying yeah. to see if there's a window, if there's an opportunity. He's admiring this ancient door. Meanwhile, Chara and friends just uh, having some fun. Yep. Jump up the top. Maywall does come through. Hotpa, however, he gets left out. Will get taken down. Dogman able to find the kill. Now the immortality field is going to be eliminated as well. Lanarain already gained one tick for free as Happy will fall. Urser getting slowed up, nearly frozen. Jumps back over on the point. Gets a nice little melee hit in the back of Rio's skull. Shu goes off the side. And well, that's A in the Ooh. books. This did not go well at all. Eileen. Eileen needed to use that ice block on the point not only to buy time, but also to build Blizzard. Blizzard, I think, is their best tool at stopping this double cap because when we go into this attack right now, EMP, once it's ready, is going to absolutely open up a Dragon Blade for Arister. You can see the Nano come through. Even Pokepo can kind of lead this attack with a Primal Rage. They need that Blizzard badly. Eileen's 25% away from it. They'll have a Nano Boost, and they're trying desperately to use Hop on this Roadhog to try to get a pick so they can slow down this push, but the double cap, it's coming. They're gonna, gonna be stopping. They have to use the Nano to try to keep him alive. Immortality Field now gonna be coming through, but he's got a sliver of HP. The heal that I just now gonna be expiring. Pokemon playing forward, zapping away like a madman. Just holding on to that Primal, so he can try to gain the members of the Guangzhou Charge off the point here right at the end. So, Primal Rage gonna get popped, hot punch, juggled into the corner. The Dragon Blade coming down. Oh, that affliction not lasting long enough. The Sleep Dart from Shu will put him in, in a bit of a nap, and Happy can scoop the kill, but still already two ticks going over to the side of the, of the Atlanta Reign as the Charge desperately tries to stabilize. Eileen gonna be showing us the Doomfist at long last, but the EMP instantly comes in and the Doomfist gets hacked, so can't do much of anything, and Atlanta Reign will just cap the point. Not much you can do with the Doomfist while hacked. The handling of that blade by the Reign was nearly perfect. They minimized the effect of the Blizzard, and that's how you take an ult advantage and destroy your opponent to try to complex setup. You take that momentum into B, you get a good time bank. A minute and 40 seconds plus to them. Let's see what happens in OT. And here we go. It's time for overtime. 523 for the rain, 341 for the charge. Really great shutdown. I mean, it was almost basically just self-destruction on the side of the Kong Show charge with their Funker comp. Uh, getting left out I the mean, dry was hot by there with we, that Bastion. We have to mention also that like Chara was spamming his right clicks to the sky. Like, I, I don't know how serious they thought the attack was gonna come or how quickly they thought it was gonna come because of what they were doing while they were standing there. It was a bit peculiar. And I mean, then, we yeah. see a lot of Batiste players do that, but it's just, it was mostly the May wall yeah, I coming mean, out from Miley that uh, didn't work out so well. The, yeah, the, the snowball is going to hit you hard when you <laughs> lose the first uh, defense like that, especially with no Blizzard initially, and then he got isolated there before he could use it effectively. Let's see how this attack goes for them. They had a great time bank themselves, and they'll need to try to repeat that. Yep. Well, right now, they work their way into the side room. Rio not going to get picked off the start. Already improvements on the initial push here from the charge. Bionade coming through. Oh man, that's gonna catch four. Dogman just keeps hitting these. Yeah, instantly Daco pushing forward to try to find some kills here, but unable to do so. But Bo just gonna be playing directly below them, waiting for the drop down. So he can start getting that clean zap coming through to build up the primal rage. Right now he is uh, very much surging past Rio in that regard. 70% compared to 45. Rio now starting to pick up the pace a little bit as they work their way over towards the point. Start poking their heads in around the corner. And a boost about to come up. Shoes got it instantly. Throws that one down. Bait base is going to be eliminated. Rio moving forward. Comes up with the kill on Amasa. And he doesn't even have to use the primal, which means that we're just going to have this for the point B tank as A goes the way to the charge. We were giving a lot of praise to Arister and, uh, you know, he was way out of position there. They were kind of chasing Rio off the side, and that left Baby Bay all alone. 
Azaria is hard to kill. She has her bubbles. She has the heals from her supports. But when you don't have those heals you, and you're by yourself, it's very easy to just get focused down. Baby Bay dies first. Does build a grab to match with Happy. And they do have, uh, you know, ways to hold this. But I'm scared about the fact that they don't have a transcendence. And the Guangzhou charge might end up if they can lead the grab first, getting that first pick that leads to the double cap. Well, bubble and jump right up the top. Isolated in the staircase right now is Rio. Grab's gonna be coming through just solo onto the wind stint. The final rage is not enough to save him. Slick punish there by Baby Bay. They didn't get Rio last time, but this time he leaps in too early. Primals as well, so that's a missing tool. Now he's gonna swap over to the Rhine. Yep. Dogman over to the Zen, so he's gonna build up, but I mean, Happy's already got the grab ready to roll. Yeah, that's the one thing that they still don't have an answer for, but at least he's working towards that. There's not a really good way to delay this either with the grab used in the last fight on Rio. You know, they can't just make him grab uh, off the point. Push their way out, rally to lead for my lead. See Rio getting isolated, pushed over to the side, but still not going to be taken down this time. Popo's going to be the first one to fall. She finds a kill, the bomb out from Hotball, unable to get anything, but Erster shuts down the remake. Still a good play from him to take that away. A minute 25 remaining as Maza will get eliminated. Happy coming up with multiple kills right now on this high charge. Zarya will go ahead and help scoop a third as Urster gets taken down. And now it's got to be just delay tactics. Anything they can throw away the wall and hope it sticks for the Atlanta Rain. Dogman 30% away from a transcendence, but will get taken down. The hack goes through onto Baby Bay with a wrecking ball. He doesn't stand a chance. Urster jumps back in, instantly shield bashed by Eileen, taken down, and the double cap comes in for the charge. Looks like this map is going late. You know, we're very likely with this, uh, much of a time bank as well for the Guangzhou charge going into a third round of overtime. Atlanta will have to bring us there, but since they have so much time in their bank, you have to imagine that it will happen. The, the thing we're wondering now is, does Guangzhou charge run the crazy bunker May again, which is great at eliminating time. You already know that you don't have to stop the charge from double capping because you've done that yourself. So. There's not a win condition on this push for the Atlanta Rain. The real thing you're thinking about is how much time can we eliminate off the clock? Sure. So for the Guangzhou charge, one of the best ways to do that is the bunker comp. But then you run the risk of, in the future, they, if you fail it again, that's, they have even more time than you. And then we might go into a round where they've got five caps and the Atlanta Rain win the map with six. Yeah. I know we're looking very far ahead here, but that's the kind of thought process is going through the charge's mind right now when you're looking at a massive time bank like this one. Yeah, it seems like it got into their heads a little bit with the execution on the bunker, so will not be going forward. She was still going to be sticking through with the Ana, however. The Bionates out from both sides, whether it's Dogman or Shu, have been very instrumental in, in the, you know, big turning point in some of these fights, so they'll just go ahead and stick through with that one. Well, Dogman's going to run on the Zen this time, though. Well, they'll scout this first. We'll see if he changes after Dako gets the report, but... I do like the swap over to Zenyatta when you have better time like this because you could basically just say, well, I'm going to get a grab and I'm going to counter your grab because you're running Ana. Yep. And then I'm going to get this point as long as I don't mess up the fight. John's coming through. He's getting Chara, but I'm going to find the kill. Dogman really trying to hunt him down. There's a couple extra people who pull their focus over to the Lucio. They want to finish him off. So for now, just playing this one out patiently. They definitely the raid should have anything. And they have time. Absolutely. So now just under five minutes. Rio being juggled around a little bit, has to leap out the safety. Hot as well trying to retreat. So he gets cut down to about half HP, and that's just gonna be the rain. Beelining in towards the point. Dogman pressure for the moment. Sleep gonna be connecting on the Daco. He will be safe. Shields are raised. Dogman gets zoned back just a little bit by Hot but we'll be okay in the long term. This Gordorf and Rio get taken low, and that's gonna be Daco able to get the alley oop, scoops the kill. You just try to play around. A couple decent sightlines here. Gets another sleep in on the Daco, but gets hounded down by Baby Bay. Cap comes in, 448 on the clock for the Atlanta Rain, looking for the double cap. I mean, this is definitely gonna be a double cap, right? I mean, how do you stop this with the tools the charge have, or the lack of tools, I should say? They're only at 70% of a grab, the Atlanta Rain, so that's the one saving grace here, but they've got a trance. They could force the grab using the trance. So many things they could do. And they're gonna be thrown down. Rio stunned up, getting juggled. Goes lower and lower, and they finally, finally do pressure him down. Masa coming up with that kill, and it is just a slaughter right now. One of the favorite of the Atlanta Rain. Grab gonna be expiring on the back. Baby, they just scoop it up kill after kill. Masa gonna have to try to tag in here, or Char, rather. Gonna have to try to tag in at the last second. 
Shatter comes down, both Ryans hit the ground. That's gonna be the cap rolling through it. Lands the rain. They crush it. They never get to use their grab. They win the fight because it's such a predictable defense there. Rio gets nanoed. They stun him and knock him around. They make they eliminate him. They make him irrelevant, then use the ult advantage they have to take the point. Well, three minutes, five seconds, the advantage for the rain. Let's go into double OT. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Get strapped in, because we're in the double overtime. Four points each at the moment, but a very significant difference in time at the moment for the Atlanta Reign. 407 is what they finish with there. So Guangzhou Charge, they have their work cut out for them if they want to move up 2-0. Certainly going to be pretty, uh, pretty tall order to take both of these points in a minute and two. It will take, essentially, a double cap or a double cap after the first push fails, they don't, they're never gonna get a second chance on B. Like when they get A, they have to double. Yep. And oh, Dogman. Dogman's hiding looking for the bio. He's, He's not going doing to the j spot, but a different angle here. This could cost him dearly. We'll see, bio they throw down, only gonna be able to find Happy, but Shu somehow will be the casualty in the end. I mean, he puts the bubble up, but even then he can't retreat far enough back. It is a... Very aggressive push forward from the Atlanta Rain all the way back over to the spawn doors as they clean up shop. That's going to be 30 seconds remaining now as they force Hot Butt to surrender what little ult charge he had. As soon as the bio grenade hit, there was a bit of panic in the charge. They didn't stay in formation as well as they should have. Shu gets picked, and that's the rest is history, right? This has to be a fight they win with no ultimates. So it's going to probably have to be a pin or some sort of pickoff. My ultimate is charging. Dogman just waiting. He's looking for another bio. I think he hit one. Working at the same angle. Sleep not going to find a hit, but the bio well, is good. That's going to be two members taking low. Can they even tag in? Somebody's actually over onto the point. It's going to be Char at the moment looking for the back cap. First tick nearly rolling through, but he's got to exit as he takes too much damage. This does pull the raid back over the point. Gives the charge a bit more room to work with, but Nano comes out onto Pokepo. He is swinging away like a madman, desperately trying to take down Rio. Now he himself under severe fire. Goes lower and lower. Shatter's going to be coming in, but it hits no one. Bubble is up from Happy, so he stays safe. And onto the point, the first tick nearly there for the charge, just trying to outlast them. The bomb's coming in from Daco, but he's going to be taken down, and Hotpa ate Baby Bay's grab. Absolute huge play for him. Daco with a self struck only able to find one, but the charge still not yet grabbing a tick. But with Masa going down, this seems more and more doable for them. Shatter comes in, just kind of zoning them back. Dogman now going to be picked off. Baby Bay here by himself will get finished off. And with a minute to start, they actually do manage to grab A. 30 seconds on the clock. They only it's, have a sound barrier. It's the trance that'll get you. And that's what got charged at this point. Shu had the burst healing that Masa didn't yet have because it builds slower then transcends. As you can see, Shu's about to have a second one by the time Masa's had his, and that's what really got them the opportunity. Now, they have to snowball this. Baby Bay matches grab charge as well because he stayed so long. And this is really a fool's errand for the Guangzhou charge to jump down onto the point, but they've got no choice. I mean, they have to. There's just no time left. Nano nearly ready. Needs that one online instantly. Trying to save Poke Poke. Instantly draws that one down. Sound barriers out from the charge. Matched on the other side by Masa. They try to keep Poke Poke alive. Shatters online. Drops the hammer. Manages to fight too, but can they get the kills? That's going to be the transcendence running. Good interrupt there on Poke Poke's pin. They manage to knock him to the ground. Now the grab comes through. They lock him up. The tanks are going to be falling. The Guangzhou charge. Can they actually do this? Starting with just over a minute. They're now in on to B. Masa tags forward. Keeps this one contested for the moment. Dogman has to basically intend giving up his life, but now the supports are going to be dead. They're ticking their way up one already going over to the charge. Can they actually close this out? Wrecking ball coming through from Pokpo. They zone him back. The pin from Rio not going to hit, but Pokpo instantly melts down. The ground comes in from Baby Bay, but it's not going to be good enough. They get it in OT. Watch your charge. Oh, man. That is the critical asterisk, though. It is OT, and the Atlanta Reigns still have an incredible time bank to match them, tie up the 6-6, six, six, then take an additional seventh point to win the map. So the charge are now playing only for a draw, and it's all about defense, defense, defense here now, because, you know, 
It didn't work out for them previously. We saw the initial pick, the kill comes in. Atlanta Rain steamroll both points, maintain that top tier time bank. It's incredible in itself that the Atlanta, uh, excuse me, the Guangzhou Charge were able to even make this happen with no ultimates there. They played with raw mechanics, absolute skill-based, ultless fight there that they take. We're not completely ultless, right? Chara matches the sound barrier, but. Yep. With an ult disadvantage, they were able to turn this on its head and keep the chances of a draw alive. If you don't get A on the first push in a situation like this, then that's what you're playing for, because even if you get B, there's just no physical way in, the, in pro play to get a time bank in this situation. Well, basically, back to the beginning for the Atlanta range, just seven, minute, or seven seconds more than they would normally have at the start of the round. I say they play for a draw. I do have to add on to that that there's a chance they could hold this for four minutes and win the map here. Absolutely. But, you know, I mean, I think after that push, I, you know, anything's possible. I think they're thinking about not doing that, but just trying to eliminate time make as much as possible. I think they're thinking about the draw. They're playing this for the draw because it's unrealistic to expect you're going to hold this for four minutes plus. Well, we've seen it before. They're still going to be looking for it. Basically, a normal full hold. That's what they're going to be looking for here. Poco just going to be charging back, getting ready for the swaps. Okay, Wrecking Ball. And Erster gonna be shifting over onto the Fara. I'm just gonna try to surprise them with this potentially. Never mind. It's an indecision. It's back to the break. I like the Dogman <laughs> sticking with the uh, attack Zenyatta. I think it's way better given the time bank they have than the Ana here. When you don't have good line of sight for the grenades on the attacking side. Bubbles coming in, Rio. Just trying to hold the door. As best as humanly possible, Chara. Guarding from above. It's also looking to try to isolate one target if possible. Oh, that's going to be the breakthrough. They push in. Rio going lower and lower. Can they keep the line? The answer is going to be no, but Basa will be traded out as Eileen comes up with the kill, but he himself will get picked off by Baby Bay. And now Shu is gone. Three members dead. That's going to have to be the retreat call. They don't want to give any other ult charge over to the members of Atlanta Rain. That's why they're not sticking around and trying to buy more time off the bank. We'll get a little bit of a boost of time here, but they'll have a lot of time to work their way up to ult advantage to stop the charge. I think Shu should absolutely be swapping to Zen right now because he needs to eventually get that transcends to stop Baby Bay's grab. If they can use Zen to defend here, then he has that fighting chance of winning the map. But if he stays with the Ana here, then, I mean, this could just be the, the, the end. And he needs a big bio grenade here if he's going to make this pick worth it. And Baby Bay, regardless, is going to finish that charge. Oh, throws it down, goes straight into the shield. Popo managed to block that one out. Baby Bay's ticking up. Very low. Nano, online. He's just looking for the grab. He's like, if I get this grab, game over. Pretty much, unless Hotbuck can take that one away. Two minutes and 40 seconds still remaining. Rio gonna get nano They try to keep him alive down here, still taking so much damage, though. So juggled around the barrier even. Dangerously low. Fire strike through, allows him to get the Earth Shatter, but Dogman will cut him down. Grab comes through. Trance is gonna be out. Dogman keeping his squad alive now. The answering grab comes through, plus the Shatter Pumpo. He gets himself a double with the fire strike. One tick going through with a charge. Gonna have to get strapped in because it's gonna be another two plus minutes that they have to defend to try to get this draw. Yep. No way to get the sound barrier in time for Chara. No transcendence means all Baby Bay has to do is hit the ground with the grab. He builds it, he makes it happen. There's still a chance for a draw, but it feels less and less likely with Atlanta taking point A on first push every time. Yep, 213 for Rain as we go into triple OT. Well, Guangzhou Charge, we're able to pull off a pretty miraculous push with a minute, get the double cap, but now can they have a single tick defense here on A? And when we were two to two, we described the scenario, right? About how the rain were gonna be playing for that seventh capture. We you knew that in this meta and also how these two teams are playing that we were likely going to eventually end up in this scenario. We do. And now the Guangzhou Charge are still gonna stick with Shu on the Ana and they're gonna run this 
you know, Ryan Zarya. There's a chance that Baby Bay decides to play around the fact there's no trance again and just kind of crashes his way into the point repeatedly until he gets a grab. And I think that's a solid plan here. Well, again, showing some experimentation, but they swap away from it. Erster almost coming in with the Batiste, but we'll go ahead and swap back over on it to the rig. Knows the positioning here for shoes the same as Dogman's. You have line of sight of all your teammates, but also a big opportunity for a bio grenade if they take this path, which they do. Shields up though. That's gonna be as they're taken down now, Masa. Already a good start. A minute and a half gonna be remaining. Atlanta Rain. Kinda have to just get out of here and reset right now. The longer they wait to die, unless they can engineer a uh, an escape here. The whole idea is to make sure that Baby Bay doesn't get grabbed. And when he's stuck in here like this and can't hit anybody, he's not building grab charge. Happy, on the other hand, is at 50%. If Baby Bay never gets that grab, you're never worried about the lack of trance. That's gonna be a heal denier there on to Pokepo. As he goes lower and lower, Airstar as well barely inches his way out through the doors to try to stay in there. Docko's gonna get popped out of the mech. The shield going lower for Pokepo. Nearly broken. Launch your charge feel free to go ahead and push forward. And this is gonna be a slaughter in their favor. They clean him up, Docko. Left here. In a longer fight like this, usually the attacking Zarya would build a grab, but Guangzhou Charge has kept going in and out of these fights, avoiding his damage. And almost like a metronome in terms of the timing of it, they walked out right when Baby Bay would engage. He still builds 75%. He will build this in this fight. The rally's gonna come out from Arister, Baby Bay's gonna come in. He's going to do enough damage to build the grab. How do they deal with that is probably gonna be a sound barrier. Char is gonna have to live long enough to see that. Grab straight. Up here onto the door. No kills coming through yet. Dogman does manage to get the transcendence off in time to keep him alive. But Dogko's gonna get popped out of the mech by Hot Pop. And now Chara. Dead. Popo comes up with a kill. No Even sound barrier. Rio going lower and lower. Popo gonna be taken down, but it is at the cost of the enemy main tank. So still the grass in here. For the side of the Atlanta Raid, the grab comes in from Baby Bay. The kills are gonna be there. And it was looking so good for the charge to be able to pull this off and force out the draw. But the Atlanta Raid with their superior time bank. With all those rounds, they managed to take the win, tie us up. We saw it coming, you know, this is how this map is played often in professional play. A marathon of a round here. But in the end, the Atlanta Raiders are going to tie us up one-to-one. -one. This is going to be a well-needed halftime they're going to take. That it is. We'll see you guys on the other side of that break. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7 and by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Atlanta started off the week upsetting the mighty NYXL, and now it's the Charge who are trying to close out an upset. Right now, it's tied up at the half. 
at one apiece. Welcome back, everybody. It's Pucket. I'm here with Sideshow. We've got hexagrams, and as you can see, the score above. 1-1 one, one after a very, 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 <laughs> very, very long Hanamura game. <laughs> But let's remind everyone where we started, because we started this match with Atlanta coming off that big win over the NYXL. They had all the confidence in the world, but unfortunately, the gameplay wasn't as clean as we were expecting, Josh. Well, they certainly didn't look like the NYXL crushers, and I think there was a lot of conversation in the community about how good, really, Atlanta Reign are. They were able to take that win over NYXL, but I was personally worried they might not have the focus. I think they have looked fairly focused. A lot of people were thinking, okay, they're right back to where they were with Daco in the lineup. They're a fantastic team again. Well, I think you have to wind that one back in as well. They still look like a team that's struggling at times. They didn't really know how to deal with this composition particularly well. And I think overall, the pieces that shone the most against NYXL, people like Dogman, ended up actually getting shut down and punished a little bit, especially in this first map. There were some questionable plays, especially when it got to Hanamura too, but even in this first one from Dako, I don't think he's playing as crisp as I used to remember him playing. Stepping out in front of shields, getting d a little too often, but I think the charge are playing pretty well. It's the guys from the charge I was expecting to step up. It's Happy and it's Shu, and they're having carry moments, covering up for some of their team's mistakes. Absolutely. So let's talk about this second map, because now you're the charge. You got some confidence from game number one. Your attacks are looking glorious, but where's your defense here, friends? This one! We saw it go six points, six points. Finally, it's Atlanta stealing yeah, it, it with the seventh final point. But this one long. was forever. It really did. It lasted forever. It was the longest Hanamura game, or the highest scoring, rather, Hanamura game that we've had in 2019. And both of these teams were taking advantage of the snowballs into point B. And that's something that you don't see very often. I mean, this is a beautiful play. The grab into the uh, Earth Shatter as well, that they, they tranced it. Uh, but it doesn't matter because they were after the players that were behind the grab, not the players that were in the grab. Hey, uh, the, the only thing that matches the charges' lows are also their high points in play, too. <laughs> and it's uh, the defense got in trouble a lot of the times because Chara was a little too aggressive and Atlanta was able to spot him out, who's past him, and he was the first to die in some of these fights. And what's really frustrating is that the charge had an advantage a lot of these situations, but were dying with ultimates that could have won them point A's or even point B's on a defense, and it just never came to fruition. I think what I've noticed about this game with the charge is that they seem to be less scared of Atlanta. It's something that we talked about a lot for the Guangzhou charge after they got in their head about that long loss streak. And having broken that against the Hangzhou Spark and the fact that that went to five maps, I think has given them a bit of confidence. And they don't, they're not just backing off from every engagement. They are going toe to toe. They're sometimes losing Rio. They're not getting the best end of these head to heads, but it's not like he's getting slammed in the fights. And he's actually surviving a lot more than Mano was in their previous engagement, That's which is true. super weird. That's yep. kind of a, a weird point, a Very good point strange. though. Let's talk big picture for the charge fans out there though, because this is a team that started so strong in stage one. Now you look at their record, they're three and nine. They haven't won in stage two, basically. They're getting pummeled. Hex, yeah. here's a look at all their failures in the past, but well, you still picked this team to win the match. Yeah, well, one, you know my disdain for numbers in general, as it were. <laughs> but look at this, this is not fair. This isn't cool to do to a team. They have to go against the Gladiators. They get the Titans early on as well. Eternal, Shock twice, the Gladiators again. Spark, they have lost to. Really, oh. though? A 4-0 to the Eternal. That's when they were okay. And you know, not everyone has a perfect day all the time, but this is a brutal <laughs> schedule for them. This is in their losing streak. I think they also may have had to play the uh, Titans twice at some they point. They did too. in stage So one, yeah. they played the Titans twice, the Gladiators twice, the Shock twice. That's like six losses right there. That's just, that's just tough luck. Well, yeah. we do know Kings Row is gonna be game three. This is basically gonna be the turning point of the match for the Charger. Are you still confident in your pick? Yeah, I'm, I'm still confident in my pick. I think they're gonna run what uh, Atlanta would call cheesy comps. And I think the Charger accepts at it. Even on Kings, I think they can do it. Josh, uh, you picked Atlanta. How does this play out? Yeah, I feel still fairly confident in Atlanta, mostly because I don't think we're going to head towards that cheesy pick. We'll see. I don't really know what we're going to see. Right. But if it goes to the 3-3, I think that Atlanta have been getting the better end of most of those engagements. And the first map was mostly them relying on DPS. So I agree with you. They need to bring out the DPS at some point. I just don't know whether the King's map is, uh, King's Row is really yeah, the map. I can see a hot Bafara coming in here. Just yeah, for a little bit. It's going to be insanely close, I yeah. feel. Blizzardina, are you ready for two more games? Make some noise. That's right. We're going to close it out here at halftime. We come back. Game three on King's Row. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. When everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are halfway through this series so far. It has been a long one, a bit of a trek at the moment, going to six rounds on each side. Not six rounds, but six points on each yeah. side on Hanamura. Rain able to close it out in the end, tie up the series one to one, so we still might have plenty more Overwatch to be played, unless somebody can clean up their hat, because right now it's been very scrappy. Certainly has been very scrappy, and I think that we're going to continue to see a little bit of that from the charge. That's what they're all about. In terms of maps, though, these two next maps are some of the most standardized maps in the pool. Yep. You see almost purely 3-3 on both of them. So if it is going to be either of these teams, particularly the charge, you would expect uh, to run something weird, um, how weird can it really be is the question that we have to ask. Because, I mean, we've, this is still uh, King's Row. <laughs> well, we've seen some pretty weird stuff in the past, even on King's Row. Some main attacks coming through. If I do recall, back in the days of Contender Season Two, yeah, we've seen a lot of stuff. We saw Surefire with the, you know, bamboozle with the Widowmaker, yeah, get a swap. There's a lot of different things you can do um, on this map, but a lot of the strategies we've seen in the past have been figured out and no longer used because they're so common. Arister's gonna pop with the Widow to see if he can get a kill. Shoot, trying to get a, a sneaky little sleep dart there. Not gonna hit anybody, and as you say, Erster just gonna be swapping back over to the Brigitte now. All right, so Lorraine is gonna look to build old charge here, and non-stop Dogman is decided he wants to play Zen now. He's looking for picks on the shoe, and otherwise just as much damage as possible to build the Transcendence. Pushing forward right now, are the charge moving away from the point for just a little bit, Rio. He went up his flank for a moment to Dogman, but instantly turns back around with a shield. But as I say that, the barrier is going to get destroyed. And hey, Reinhardt not even going to be able to finish the voice line. Dogman takes his head off immediately after that shield goes down, and that's going to be A, snatched up by the rain. I mean, Dogman, I think you have to give this guy credit where it's due, and he's been one of the most talked about players in the Overwatch League, but he's young talent. He comes straight from, you know, the, this, you know, the contenders and open division scene streamer and he has come in and really impressed as a rookie player yeah he has honestly it's been a really good start uh, for him you know making it into playoffs the first time uh, that he makes it into the overwatch league bull cut or not pretty impressive yeah <laughs> be more impressive with a bull cut though yeah i have to agree so all right well coming in. let's see if they can have the same impact with this nano as the trance is going to be on the other side Ooh, rio oh, dangerously low there just managed to stay alive 
Grab's gonna be coming through on either side. Shatter comes in the bomb, looking for the pop, but Daco's gonna get himself a quadra kill. There are so many ways to deal with a nanoed Reinhardt. We've seen this already several times this series. If you telegraph your game plan immediately with a nanoed Reinhardt, it's so easy to stun him, grab him, knock him to the side, shatter him. I mean, there's so many different ways you can shut this down. A nano boosting Winston is a little bit more difficult because of his extra mobility and his ability to go from, you know, vertically from one floor to another. Well, the Reinhardt here, this is a thing of the past, a nano or Reinhardt for an engagement. That's old meta. It doesn't really work out very well anymore, and you've got to use it late after the grab if you're going to use it at all. If you're going to use it to initiate, you're just going to get pummeled, and we're seeing Rio face this adversity every time he gets nanoed. Well, Cart nearly rolled into B already with still four minutes plus on the clock. Sound Barrier going to be coming out from Chara, now matched by Masa. No further ultimates available for the side of the Atlanta Reign. Still trying to get this cart across the finish line, but... Airster will get taken down. Baby Bay managed to find Happy, but now with Masa picked as well. That is going to have to be a bit of a slowdown here on the push from the Atlanta Reign as they wait for those two supports to come back in. Yeah. And we will see Rio kind of just back off. He's trying to he's trying to be greedy and get a bunch of ult charge. He's also building charge. And Popo's doing a really good job of getting off charge for himself. Baby Bay, he's just going to pick off Shu. Hot Bug going to be knocked out of the mech. Has to use a bomb now. Grab's going to be coming in as well. And that is just going to be the lockdowns coming through. Fire Strike narrowly missing Chara, but seems like he's still not going to be able to make it out with his life intact. He's desperately trying to do so, but Airstar gets him right at the end. 452 for the final stretch. It was mentioned on the halftime show. There's a lot of, you know, nerves that come into being on such a losing streak like this. Rio is a better player, I feel, than what he's showing right now. You and I have commentated him for a long time. But Pokpo is destroying him in the front line. He's playing too greedy. He doesn't have the Ana anymore, but he's standing there like he does. That's for sure. He's dying first. Shatter oh, huge coming Shatter. Out, finds Eileen over to, onto the side. The Transcendent's still going to be coming through from Shoot, trying to keep them up. Bomb not going to be invested. Wasn't a large enough hit. Daco's just going to get pushed off. I guess the Jets maybe on cooldown as he goes flying off the side. Well, they also committed the rally here. And what was a huge opportunity with that Shatter is shut down by the fact that they don't have any follow-up ultimates. They can't close the gap there. The rally was there in an attempt to get them on top of the heroes that were stuck and stunned there, but it's not enough, so it ends up being actually uh, pretty moot at the end of the day. Grab available from Happy Dogman, still 39% away from that next Transcendence. Picking decent pace at the moment, trying to pick that one up. Moko pushing forward, a little bit of aggro, trying to get that next Shadow ready to roll. Baby Bay, Bay stunned. stunned up, the bubble comes in, the barrier on the side of Pokemon just, oh, it's so low, and Shu will be able to take him down. The ult at the moment for the Guangzhou charge looking fantastic as they nearly have six ready to go. It's the stun from Eileen that sets up the kill onto Baby Bay there. He bubbles late, but he's already low on health, and it's too hard to escape in a situation like that. And ideally, Happy wanted to grab in that fight before Dogman had trance, but he doesn't need to because they get that kill. So they get to hold on to six ultimates here, and they could stagger them how they like to try to force out Dogman's trance and Moss's sound barrier. That's what you want here as the charge, is to waste those support holds. Grab comes through, catches him right on the side of the cart. Transcendence has to come in from Dogman. Bombs into the back, they get the boom. That's going to be Baby Bay taken down. Now, no grab in the greater fight. That's all you need? Yep, push forward, coming back in. Decent time by so far for the charge. Remember where we started. Now we're down below three minutes. It's been a very successful defense and a very economically friendly, I guess you could say, as far as the ults are concerned for the charge. And since they still hold the trance, they're just able to say, okay, we're going to give it two ults to this fight. We baited out Dogman's trance. Still got the kill with a bomb because it was well executed there. Hoppa makes it happen. And they have the defender's advantage as well. It's hard for Baby Bay to even get into grab right now. So how could he be more efficient? They're going to have to settle for burning these members down low first. And Happy nearly getting picked there. As meant to stay alive. This is what Very you want. high energy for Baby Bay. Trying to melt the shield from Rio. It's gone. It's nearly destroyed. Has to try to just retreat and let that one reach in, which gives a lot of space for the Atlanta Reign to advance with the card. He was hoping to beat the trance of the shoe because he was doing so much damage. He might not even need that anymore. Happy! No, he's gonna be out. Happy going lower and lower. Drops the crowd. Catches the couple members. Dogman's gonna be dropping the bomb right into the middle of the point. The sound barrier comes through from Chara. Trying to keep everybody else alive. Vincennes is gonna be expiring from both of these teams. The sound barrier coming in a bit later from Masa to try to finish the fight. Popo going low, just backing up constantly with a shield race, trying to keep his teammates safe. And so far, it's working a treat. It's the armor pack still staying alive. That next Shatter nearly online for Pokemon, but he's got to survive. Keeps falling. Sway back around the corner, but Daka's been knocked out of the back. Baby Bay down to half. 
Okay, they're gonna have to back off here, I think. Pokpo being aggressive is gonna come back to bite him if he actually continues to do this. He's got the Shatter, but he needs a positional advantage to use it. He doesn't have that right now. I think it's safer to try to get Baby Bay the grab. Nako's gonna be dead. A minute and 20 remaining. They have to wait for that Diva to come back in. Shu with the flank here. He came around the right side where the shield couldn't block his damage. Shatter's gonna be coming out. Oh, as Ryo goes up into the air. The Shatter's looking really good. And that's gonna be two kills coming through. Transcendence has to be bumped by Dogman. Couldn't make it around the backside of the shield in time. So does force out that ultimate. Now Shu gonna be using his own. Just gonna buy some time. Wait for the rest of the team to come back in as the grab comes through. Char, however, gonna be picked up. Now Happy gonna be going down. Hotpa trying to delay. will get knocked out of the mech. And Rio's coming back in now, but the card's gonna start to dance again. They just kill off this pesky baby Diva, who's keeping it rolling. Starting inching forward now, the sound barrier gonna be used. Now soon enough to keep Baby Bay alive in the fight, so now this, the damage really gonna be gone on the side of the Atlanta Reigns. They try to hold out hope to get this across the finish line with time in the bank. Char gonna be taken down, Dogman finds a kill, and that was just enough, just what they needed to get the finish here on King's Row. But man, what a hold from the charge. They were so close too, to buying a little bit more time. The Doomfist comes out, and then suddenly you've got a real fighting chance. Popo is winning the Reinhardt matchup so hard, though. They get the kill with Shu, they overextend the Shatter, punishes hard. 35 seconds on the finish to see what Charge can do with their attack. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Atlanta Rain. Steamrolling their way through King's Row at the beginning, but getting to that last stretch, even with the massive time bank that they had, Charge is working them pretty good with that defense. They drained the clock down to 35 seconds, and now that's all that remains. Yeah, we're gonna take a look at the Shatter here at the end. This is after the pick we saw from Shu. And get real right up in the air. He's just way too far out there. When you get that far out, you make yourself vulnerable to displacement like that, and you empower your opponent's shatter potential. And Pokepo has just been absolutely crushing him in terms of position. Eileen. Eileen on the Doomfist here. We're gonna finally see this for the first time this series. Very difficult to get into position on King's Row to use this, though. Already getting pressure here by Baby Bay, tagged up at every peak of the corner. Time to slam into the back, sunned up, instantly melted down, but they can't quite finish him off the shielding. Coming in clutch with the passive, will be able to survive. Now he's cutting around the back. Just Waiting trying to the keep hidden. That's half, half of everything about Doomfist is just not getting spotted. Masa pushing forward. Okay, they do see him, but they can't pick him off. Oh, now he's gonna try to come up from above. There's Sir nearly getting picked, falls down below half HP. That's gonna be the charge in onto the point. Nearly grabbing the first tick, but plan to rain. They aggress, push back in. Trying to maintain control here. Now gonna be pushed back. Maybe Bay getting right up into Rio's face. Stunned up, however. And if he kept alive, he's gonna fall low. And Hoppa does manage to find the kill as he's over onto the, the Zarya right now. Two kills going the way. The Guangzhou charge. Looking for a bit more. They're gonna be able to find it. It is the Hotpa show in the kill feed right now. Looking great. And that is gonna be A. Going their way. So now 509. Very similar feeling here. 
So they get ready to start the streets phase. Look at the difference here as well. Papa's playing Zarya. This is one of his, you know, best heroes back, in, you know, often last year, but also in the Apex days on LW Red. It's normally Happy who plays the Zarya, but they've changed it up with this Doomfist composition because it's play they're playing it more like dive in a lot of ways because you have this extra damage that rolls with your Zarya. Zarya needs to support the Doomfist while also doing massive damage. Here comes another rocket punch. Well, that's going to be the grab coming through. Space Jam potential. Not seeing any Space Jam. They don't commit. Yeah, Eileen just holding on to it. They see the Transcendence gone, though. And he's gonna drop into the back. Oh, Fossa wasn't ready for it. Neither was Pogpo. The uppercut takes him out. Eileen looking clean. If you know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm speechless after what you've just said. I mean, there's nothing else I can add to that one. <laughs> Poor Nako. That's that's what we can talk about, is Nako is uh, getting brutally staggered. Yeah, this, this is mean, uh, in fact. Yeah. Well, well there now, you. now for the rain and kind of figuring out how you want to re-engage here. You know that Appa used his grab, but you also know that Shu's likely to have a chance for this next fight. You're also worried about Eileen, where he is positioned, and it's really Dogman's job and Aristo's job to shut him down. A sleep dart or a stun or both is the best way to stop this thing from getting shields. Jump into the back, Dogman, nowhere to go. The rocket punch will take him down. Eileen still just playing forward. Grab's gonna be coming out from Baby Bank. Trying to lock him down, but that is going to be the shatter into the meteor strike. Eileen scoops some extra kills, and the Guangzhou charge very similarly just steamrolling their way through King's Row. Five minutes remaining in the time bank. That's the space slam right there with it's, the shatter. We're going to have to do something to stop this. I mean, the thing is, it, Doomfist is such a pick based hero. He gets a single kill by, you know, slamming someone in the wall with his punch or using the seismic slam to get okay. a combo. Oh, this time he can't make it out. Nako will be able to come up with the kill, so... Decent stabilization for the rain for the moment with a single pick. You just don't want to be in those rooms, don't want to be in those walls. Well, despite losing out on their DPS, they will go ahead and use a sound barrier. Charge to keep everybody alive, Hoppa just beaming down Masa. Gets rid of the one contesting the cart, and now they continue to roll forward. They don't even need the grab! I mean, it is just a slaughter at the moment. They're just gonna grab spawn, I think. Yeah, might as well. Daco's gonna take a different angle here, or they're, they're gonna get going, caught. Okay, he's coming from the, the right side. Trying to push his way around to the right side. He's not going to him back. Yep, he just can't get in. Whip shots that all come through. They push him off, and the charge. Well, they make it look easy. Doomfist is all they needed. Eileen goes back to his signature hero, at least here in stage two. And the Atlanta Rain are caught off guard. They're picked in these tight hallways. 431 to a minute. Let's see who comes out on top when we come back for OT. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Guangzhou Charge crushing their attack on King's Row. They'll start things off in overtime. On the defense, Atlanta Rain have a minute. Yeah, with all the delay that the Charge had, even though they were getting caught all out oftentimes, Rio was killed in that shadow we had the replay of. They fought a lot of time. They had a lot of good ult exchanges overall. The Atlanta Rain certainly can take this on their first push. I mean, let's look back to Hanamura. You know, that happened quite often. So I think the charge should just take a very defensive approach. They have to assume they're going to get A with the time bank they have, and they'll push a little bit. So, you know, if things are going poorly, just back off. Don't give Atlanta Rain the ult advantage that can give them a huge overtime push. That's what you're most afraid of, yeah. is that overtime ult disadvantage. I mean, we already saw Guangzhou charge able to make a lot out of a little. They gave the time on Hanamura. Push before, though, Baby Bay trying to build up that energy. And around 50 at the moment as Pokemon, oh man, goes dangerously low. Knocked back, honestly, a bit of a blessing there as he gets beaten and batted around. I like the disengage here for the charge, but they will have to stick to this point. They are gonna have to come back in here. The poke damage right now coming out, especially from Shu. He's just doing some serious work, constantly trying to focus down one member, threatening them, and at least it pulls them off the point. Dogman doing more though. He's gonna get trans first. That is massive for getting this first cap. Yeah, we'll be able to have it. Happy gonna be hovering around half HP. Char gonna be taken down. Baby Bay coming up the crucial pick. Is that going to be enough, however, for them to get this cap to finish this off and try to get the card rolling? Second tick going to be snagged. 
Function Charge trying to wait as long as they possibly can. They finally start pushing forward, but already the team, the HP bar is so very low. Trance is going to be out on either side. Poco drops the hammer. It's not going to be able to find anything. Grabs come in from Baby Bay. Match by Happy on the other side. Sound Barrier comes in for the rain, however, and that's going to be Rio gone. The point going to be capped. They have to stay glued to that card as soon as it comes out those doors. I have to thank these 12 players for painting a perfect picture of what this meta looks like in its most chaotic form. Trance out early meant the grabs were going to be better for Baby Bay. Or, you know, the, the grab was going to be better for Baby Bay. Happy's coming out. Wind Dog Man had Trance up, whereas Shu having to match his Trance meant Baby Bay did more there. That's the main reason why they get this overtime push started. But the thing I was talking about earlier, being afraid of the overtime push, not this one, because they're even on ults. All the charge have to do is win one simple team fight. If the rain had an ult advantage here and this overtime push, then you're like, oh my god, they could finish the map in overtime. Anything could happen. Yeah. So they at least keep the ults even. In fact, Rio has the shatter. He hasn't been very successful with it, oh. but Rio getting juggled. He just can't make it out of here. Going to be taken down. No chance to use the shatter. At least retains the ultimate. But now they have to peel so far back. They don't have a shield to stand behind unless anyone, everyone's going to crowd up behind Eileen. I mean, Rio is just the is the, the toy, the plaything of the Atlanta Reign with how far he's standing. They are just cutting him off and killing him repeatedly. Ragdolled is what that was right there. That was a ragdoll for sure. He has the shatter. He wants to get in position to use it, but he can't die trying. All right, Hoppa goes for the sound barrier to lead from Shara. Try to take the fight to close it out right here. If they can get them away from the card for just a second, that OT bar will disappear. They gotta be careful about the ensuing grab, too. Shadow gonna be coming out. Hit just through on the other side. Eileen gonna get knocked to the ground. He's trying to stay alive. Transcend is gonna be used by Shoot Dogman. Matching on the other side, but now the grab comes in for the Atlanta Rain. This is certainly looking winnable. Bomb gonna be thrown in. Two gonna be killed on the fire. Striking the bomb from Hotbox. Not gonna find anything. Atlanta Rain will be able to cruise into B. Oh, 152 man. meters left to go, and it's just gonna be cleanup time as they build more ults. Happy was stuck in the shatter. He couldn't actually get into the fight to build the grab he needed, the grab that Baby Bay just had. And in the longer fight, Baby Bay builds half of another one. This is exactly where you don't wanna be as the charge. You don't wanna be. Down on ultimates, the defenders in an overtime push. You can't crack this, and you, and you don't have a choice in terms of, I'll just delay, I'll just back off. No, you can't do that. You cannot do that. This is a one minute push, and it is going almost all the way. Yep, Near the, nearly there. They have their eyes set on the prize right now. Do the Atlanta rain. Shatter ready to go from Pokebo, waiting for another golden opportunity. Happy, likely just gonna try to play the corner with this grab. Use the amount of chances that Daco could take it away with the defense matrix. I think if that happens, that's uh, that's GG on this play. Pretty much. Atlanta Rain probably just glide through. Grab gonna be coming out first, Happy gonna lob his in, and that's gonna be Daco taking it away, just as promised. Absolutely clutch from him. Welcome back to the team. Two series in a row, Daco coming up huge. They're trying to get them across that finish line. It's not over yet, but it's really looking like it's pretty much done. Char gonna get finished off. Shu can't do anything but retreat. OT from the very start, and they make it to the finish. Atlanta Rain looking alive. The thing is, we have to talk about the psychology of this as well. When you are the better time bank team and you've lost control of A, and you've lost control of your ult economy, you're going to make brash decisions. We saw Rio come up, try to look for a shatter. He knows if I just hit this one shatter, we stop him right where I stand. But the rain have nothing to lose. And when you think about the mentality that goes into that, Everyone's been in that ranked game where you were ahead on time bank and then suddenly the cart just keeps rolling. And you're like, guys, we got to focus. Just regroup, group up like this is stoppable, right? And I think that when the rain are just playing calm, this is the best environment for them where they're able to isolate Rio. They've been isolating all series long and kill him. The charges start making mistakes. They start using ults incorrectly. We see Happy toss the grab in to, uh, you know, the defense matrix there in the end, as you kind of predicted was a likely occurrence because of where Daco was positioned and you know how the fight was going that's the kind of thing that you know it's going to happen to even the most veteran players and of these six that is definitely hot for right now but the rest of these players have spent time playing in their contenders regions as well but even still definitely shaken and this doesn't feel like a time make advantage anymore does it 431 to the one minute i mean still decent start but not gonna get those bump ups as they advance along to the different stops hot buff Showing us the Doom Fist for the moment. Now we're gonna be swapping back over. So it seems like they're not gonna try it here on this attack despite how well it went for Eileen. Charge is gonna be looking to play around the 3-3 with their superior time bank, but uh, 
I mean, that's just been kind of thrown out the window. First on Hanamura by the charge. Now here on King's Row by the rain. Can we get the six and six on King's <laughs> Row? We're about to find out. Could be. Charge slowly advancing over onto the point. Give it a good beating to Popo's barrier, trying to knock that one down. Open up for that further damage to be coming right. through from the back line. Rio needs to make sure he doesn't overextend here around this corner. Oh, Popo uh -oh. pushing forward. Sorry, Bubble goes through there trying to keep him alive, and Rio is going to be taken down. Dogman just going to be spamming out. Eileen now falling as well. You can see it. The Atlanta Rain, every time he steps out, you watch those players collapse on him like piranhas on a piece of raw meat tossed into the river. I mean, they, they will kill him the second he steps off the, across the line. When he goes one step too far, they get on top of him, destroy him. Bukpo leads the ult charge 30% as a result. This longer fight where they kill him gives Baby Bay a grab. These things cannot happen if you want to hope to finish this map. You cannot be behind an ult. Crap coming in right at the choke. Transcendence going to be up from Shu. And a boost thrown in from Dogman. Remember, there's no Transcendence here. Try to counter that one. It does come through. Happy going to be using it now. They may take him down. Shu able to find one. Rio going to be knocked to the ground. The shield bash coming through from Erster. Denies the pin, but Erster himself going to be eliminated by Eileen. But suddenly, a point looking very open for the charge to take. Okay. Good fight there. Good disengage after the grab. Chara didn't even have his sound barrier. He will momentarily. And for the Atlanta Rain, we talked about this when they were on the attack, but the same still holds true that the biggest fear that you'll have in an overtime round on hybrid or escort is constantly being down on ultimates. And so that's the best way that the Charge are going to finish this, right? Is taking every fight more efficiently in terms of ult economy than the Reigns. So they can basically just keep countering the ults and keep the cart rolling. Two minutes is not enough time, you know, to say, well, they could lose a few fights here. They certainly have to keep it rolling, but the rain, if they can turn the economy just once, they can defend this and take the lead in the series. A lot of damage going through. Happy nearly focused down, but the sound barrier comes in just in time from Char to help keep alive. Shatter coming through. That's going to knock down two, and Baby Bay falls. Dogman as well now going to be eliminated as, hot, as Hotpa scoops himself up a double kill. A minute and 48 remaining charge. They have a lot of distance that they need to cover. But they at least have the cart rolling here. They're looking good. Yeah. Transcendence there for Shu. You know, not necessarily necessary there. Um, that was... Uh, I'll never use that. Redundantly redundant. Yes, very redundantly redundant. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, that trance probably didn't need to use that one there. And that's one step closer to turning the tables here, flipping the scales for the Atlanta Rain in terms of the ult economy. Baby Bay doesn't have his grab yet, though. Grab comes in instantly from Happy C and opening it. Erster's going to disappear. Eileen swinging away, comes up with the multi kills. And how this works in 3 3 is you, Rio uses a shatter, right? You win the fight. Then you use the grab, Rio builds a shatter. Rio shatters, you build a grab in that fight, right? This, this kind of keeps oscillating back and forth, kind of like a metronome, like I was talking about earlier. And then you always maintain that ult advantage by using basically one or two ults in every fight, whereas the rain have to use three or four to counter your push. And then you keep the cart rolling. But you have to keep that momentum up. You can't fall even one time or you lose everything. Baby Bay is going to beat Shu to ult here. So there's a chance for the rain to finally topple this. Coming up in just a second and 10% of ult for Baby Bay. Bailey six, ready to go. Happy, going to be looking to build up that next grab as quickly as he can. 26 seconds remaining. Baby Bay finds a kill. Eileen going to be taken out. Bradley coming through. Erster leading the charge as they force them back around the corner. Charge that cannot go that far. They have to be ready to tag yes. this card. I wouldn't go as far as to say the ult economy is tipped. It's even now. The winner of this fight will win or rather, it will at least bring us to another uh, draw, rather. Well, they're going to try to not even let them get close. The grab's going to be coming through. They managed to get Char into the back to force out the OT. Pin coming in. Hot Buck gets the triple. Maybe this is doable now for the charge. Oh, this is definitely doable now for the charge. They keep pushing here. The shot's coming in. Hoppa helping to clean up Erster. They're rounding the final corner. Daco just now getting killed off. We're also potentially going to break a record for Overwatch League here in terms of most pushes on King's Row. Very well might. Pushing their way forward, Rio holding on to the Shatter Chara, looking to get back. He needs that, that barrier. barrier. He needs that barrier. 
Moss is gonna have one of his own. He's waiting for the right moment to try to pull the trigger. Riley nearly coming up from Eileen. Massa nearly picked off. They almost find it. That would have been it. Shadow's gonna be coming down. It's not gonna find anything. Rio getting juggled around. Nearly po pooped in the pit, but does manage to stabilize. Keep his feet on firm ground. Daco's gonna be knocked out of the back. The rally now expiring from the side of Eileen. Kill the going in. Pokemon Massa both gonna get locked up. The grab comes in. They shut them down. Dogman only able to find one. No one can tag into the card. So in OT again. <laughs> the charge will also push to the end of King's Row. We oh, are not man. done yet. This is one of our closest matches we've had this stage. Absolutely nuts. One minute each. That was a huge play by Hoppa. He secured them this chance to win this map now. Oh dear. Don't go anywhere, guys. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have a minute on the clock. We go again into the next round of overtime. We'll see how far these guys can go. Atlanta Rain, they like a minute and five. Or no, they had a minute even. They had a minute even, they made it to the end. Yeah. Can they do it again? Can I see a nine at the top of that screen? Well, let's see. This is now, by the way, <laughs> officially the <laughs> highest scoring Kings Row in Overwatch League history. <laughs> now I'm trapped in the United Kingdom. Well, this Great. is... Basically, losing A is a death wish. You cannot let that happen. So then you've got a whole new can of worms to deal with in terms of how far the push can go. We talked everything we talked about old economy, everything we talked about overtime pushing. You can't get picked first. It is certainly a death wish right now for the charge. We have decent energy built up here by Baby Bay as he pushes his way forward. That is going to be Guangzhou forced back into the hotel. One tick. Least, yep, one tick. Go on the way of the rain. How much more can they get? Two nearly handed over. They almost got it. Rio falling low. Half HP, bit happy, gonna be taken down. BBB fights the first kills. Now the charge desperately. They have to peel back. They're just gonna have to surrender it. This is this is a disaster. Oh boy. This is a disaster. And also, remember, this is this is the first time we've really seen such a huge discrepancy in terms of ults. Without Baby Bay, yeah. definitely gonna get the first grab. Shoes got trance at least. But they can force that in a number of different ways. And oh man, this. This is the kind of push that you do not want to see as the defender here. Not at all. Seven to six at the moment. Advancing through the first choke. Rio still so far away from an earth shatter. Popo, 10. Nearly has it. 100 energy. Grab right at their feet. Not taken away at all. That's going to force out the transcendence. Shatter coming in from Popo. Not going to be able to find much. He goes in for the pin, but he's going to be taking down Rio. Will they answer one back? Trance going to be expiring now from Dogman. Guangzhou charge. They need to stabilize right here, right now. This is Hard their chance. continues to inch forward. The grab goes through. There's no defense matrix. They got Daco out of the back. Sound barrier comes through. Bombs up over the top from Hogba. That's going to be a double. And this is looking done. OT Bar going to start plummeting if they can just get Erster off the cart. Killing him is a very good way to do that. Sound barrier now rolling in. Daco dumps the bomb, trying desperately to find a pick to keep Dogman alive. He cannot do it. They cannot push further but they still get A, they still advance the card a bit. And it's somewhat ironic that the way this all fell apart was Pokepo missing the shatter during the grab, then missing a, a charge, isolating himself and getting killed after we sang his praises of beating Rio the entire time leading up to this point. Rio's the one who hits the shatter at the end to set up Hoppa's bomb. Rio's the one who is able to illuminate the members of the rain at the most critical moment and prevent that similar snowball we just watched from the Atlanta rain from happening again. So a bit of redemption here for the main tank on the side of the Guangzhou charge, but this is not over yet. They will still have to win this first fight on A and push the cart just around the corner. Almost guaranteed if you get A, but, you know, <laughs> depends on the circumstances, I, I which mean, we'll, see that. we'll see unfold. We'll see how it unfolds. Well, we were watching rain spawn camp just two days ago on this very map, so. But anything is possible, I suppose. Eileen locks in the Doomfist. The surprise factor, I think, definitely a little bit lessened by the fact he's already used it once. And as soon as they see it, 
They're not going to position themselves in these rooms where they could be rocket punched to death. Or maybe he's just simply going to swap over to the Brigida. That's also fine. Yep. They're taking less of a risky approach here. This is the safer way. Now, I like with only one minute time bank here that Dogman's going to run the Ana. Because that can lead to kills and lead to the ult advance the defenders will have. I like attack Zen, but the defensive Ana is the Ana you want to use. Let's see. Most of the time that Rio's getting those Earth Shatter stuns in, it's leading to some kills. Boat Boat trying to push forward, gets that Zarya bubble, still gonna be knocked down to half HP, but Dog Dogman's gonna take it down, Shu. Finding the opening, but Rio juggled around again. Boat Boat with the fire strike, manages to find the kill, but Dako's gonna be taken out of the mech and killed off. That's gonna be a man advantage over to the side of the Guangzhou charge. I think, I think Atlanta needs support. I think they need to get out of here. Yeah. They need to get out of here, they need to get those respawns up. They need to leave this point, they need to let it get capped. I don't think they can contest this. Dogman swaps over to Ana. There's gonna poke here. They're gonna oh, fight the for the choke. Or sorry, excuse me, to the, yeah, to the, uh, to the Zinyan. Yeah. So he's gonna be so far behind, as you can see right there, 75% for Shu. Cap comes in. Okay, they can, they can hold this. They can certainly hold this. It's gonna be an ultless fight. Eileen and Ursa are both gonna have their rallies. Whoever uses it second will have the advantage here, in terms of the armor. And a grab may be gotten in the longer fight. We'll have to see how it goes. I mean, Daco, can he eat another one? We absolutely clutch if we could. Shatter's Shatter ready. Shatter's time for Popo has to be a lot better. He's gonna get stunned up and melt him! He's he done! He disappears! 100 energy here for Happy! Hot knife through butter to anybody in front of him. Baby Bay as well. That, gets, that sound barrier shield just in the last moment. Happy just looking for another target bomb here over on the top of the cart. Not able to find any kills. Baby Bay, however, locked up in the grab. 5% shy of his own. Will get taken down. Erster and Dogman, all of them going to be disappearing. Daco, the bomb is not going to find anything. He makes it back into the mech, but there's no hope for him to survive. Sound barrier and celebration from Chara. And Guangzhou will be able to take King's Row. They move up 2-1. Yes, we still have one more map to be played. We're learning a lot about the mental fortitude and the endurance of these two teams throughout one of our longest series we've had, probably the longest series when we're done with it this season. Incredible stuff here. Charge come up big. They get the kill on Popo. They win the map. All right, well, Escort coming out to see if Charge can close it or if Rain will tie it again. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile. Freshman of the Overwatch League. And we keep on going. We power through, ladies and gentlemen. We're not done yet. The score is two to one. Guangzhou Charge take the lead in the series. We're, we're getting ready to go over to Rialto. That's right. So <laughs> things could continue, continue to be messy. Certainly. We can have more OT and maybe even a game five. I think that it's uh, important to remember how these things happen. You know, and that's why I was really uh, trying to showcase as much as I could the 
effects of having the ult lead as the attacker, even with the you know lower time bank when you're stuck on the cart. Um, and I, I think a lot of people are going to look at the series and think, wow, both of these teams are just bad at defense. But that's not really true. It's that both these teams understand how to maximize their ult economy to the best of their ability to get these small advantages to then lead into double caps, etc. And then this is the meta we've seen the most double caps like of all time on 2CP, for example. We see it a lot on maps like King's Row, where you just get that first cap on A and you push forward. Well, taking a look at the records here, 3-2 for the rain, zero and three for the charge. So One. decent chance that we be, we could be heading to a game five. I love it. A I bit of a coin flip, I guess, for the Atlanta rain as far as whether or not they're gonna give them the uh, first victory. I wanna test how far we could push an Overwatch series. You and I cast the Denmark game back in the World Cup that went like nine rounds on Hollywood. So That's true. we've been there before. <laughs> Goes, uh, they can go for a while. All right, we're gonna see Eileen on the Doomfist, it looks like here. I don't know about this on this map, though. You're really reaching on A to find a rocket punch kill against the walls. I'm all for it. I mean, I hope this works out for him, but I, I, I have my questions, I have my doubts about the ability to lock people down with a rocket punch on this position on the map. All right, show me what you got. Jumps into the back, instantly stunned up, but manages to exit safely. Waiting for those cooldowns. Come Look at how up. exposed he is on this map compared to King's Row. He's not building much old charge, and he hasn't been able to find a single rocket punch target. And the card is not moving. Meanwhile, Baby Bay halfway to a grab. He jumps into the back again. Baby Bay, as you say, a lot of energy, a lot of damage. Almost finds a kill there on Hotpa. Of course, the trance out from Shu. Can be very costly for the charge. As Land Rain continue to play forward. Dog Manning is matching with the transcendence of his own. Tara has done twice as much damage this game as Eileen has on the Lucio. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give really, you guys the uh, I'm looking at it now, you're right. It has been, uh, it has been pretty rough. Popo, -po, though, gonna be going low. Grab comes in, and Eileen finally finds his target! Gets rid of that enemy ride, but he himself will, will get burned down by Baby Bang. The thing about, on the retreat. The thing about the Doomfist pick is you have to get kills, right? You're not poking, you're not trying to do slow down. Is this down. a disconnect? Does he not realize that the rest of his team is still playing up in the cart? Daco and Erster are still here. Baby Bang now rejoining in with them. Yeah, this is a bit weird. Right. I think he thought that the, the call was to retreat, but they're still playing forward. Now he comes back in. He kills off both supports. This series is dirty, Achilles. No one knows what's happening you. anymore. I don't know what to tell you. All right, now we've got the now we've got the uh, meteor strike online. <laughs> as Eileen's finally actually um, gotten a little bit. He's only 700 damage by Lucio Ooh. now. But this is a hero that's supposed to get kills, not do slow damage over time. That's why he doesn't have that much damage, because he's not committing unless he knows he's going to kill someone. That's the general idea as, as to how Doomfist works. Obviously, he's going to poke uh, with his knuckles, but that's about it. Now, how they can engage this is going to be around the grab, you would think. But Baby Bay is almost to a second grab now, and they have the Transcendence here. So Meteor Strike, very difficult to use in this position with the Graviton Surge. A lot of damage going through under the members of the charge, but it's going to be Dogman taking down Eileen. Finds the hit, this is way forward. Double uppercut coming in. Popo and Daco dead in the front lines. This is exactly what I'm talking about in terms of getting the kills with the Doomfist. He gets the kill on Dogman. It wasn't fully with the Rocket Punch, but he engaged on Rocket Punch. They got the kills there right afterwards, or the, the shots there right afterwards. And they don't, get to, they don't have to use any ults. They walk up to point A with six ults to sell on this cart. The Rain are going to contest this and try to engage on this, but there's so much survivability here for the charge. Well, it's going to grab him right here on the bridge. The cart will glide through. Kills on the back end coming in in favor of the Atlanta Rain, but already time bank going to be bumped up 318 remaining for the charge. Yeah, that's, you know, that's reasonable on both sides. I like the idea to grab to guarantee the point. I like the idea also to counter grab to control the bridge. Getting onto the bridge now for Eileen is going to be a challenge because he's going to have to flank up here. <laughs> it is actually the highest uh, scoring match in Overwatch. I am trapped in a simulation, but this includes playoffs, mind you, including yep. best of seven series. Yes. That is how many points have been scored, and we're not done yet. So I think this uh, is going to be used as an escape tool for Eileen. He's going to try to re-engage with it, but he's just floating around looking for these kills, you know, and. No one so far has been found by him since they've gotten A. And on the back shoe, the getting taken down. He's going to be using the transcendence here. Baby Bay not even halfway to the next grab, so not going to be too bad with the side of the charge. Yeah, they actually, you feel really good about this as the charge, I think, because the card's still rolling forward, and you can certainly catch up. Jump into the back, looking for Dogman, taking him lower and lower, but he's going to get stunned up, and Eileen will be eliminated. Dogman actually going to be the one to get the killing blow in the end. That's, uh... Gotta be feeling pretty good for him. 
If you die to a Doomfist in most situations, it's because you were by yourself and you were against the wall and there was no escape and there was no one to protect you. But when you dive in like Eileen did recklessly to try to kill the backlines and yacht through the team, you're gonna get stunned, you're gonna get discorded, you're not gonna last very long. And that's what we saw happen there. It was a bit optimistic to hope that he was going to do that. I think what he wanted to do was kill Dogman, then Meteor Strike to keep himself alive, and then win the fight that way. But obviously, he got stunned halfway through. Oh, baby bang. Grab online. Waiting for his moment. But it's, uh, it seems a lot of damage. Just goes ahead, fuels back. It's a nice little wave as Eileen jumps into the back yet again. Meteor Strike. Finally used, drops back in, over towards the cart, goes in for the punch, poke poke, he's taking low, it's gonna be eliminated, and that's gonna be the kill, spilling forth for the charge. Decent amount of time buying coming in from the Atlanta Rain can still recontest the cart, but now they get a lot of space to move up. And they've controlled this high ground. Again, it's gonna be tough to, to get kills with Doomfist in this open space here, once you have this high ground control, it's the attacker around the corner that's actually easier. But when you're attacking this corner uh, past the high ground, it's a little bit tougher. I like the usage, though, of the Meteor Strike, really trapped Atlanta Rain between a rock and a hard place. Punch coming in, Eileen finishes off Erster. It's gonna be the grabs out from both sides, sound barrier. Throwing in from the Atlanta Rain as they try to hold out here. Continue this defense. Shatter out from Pope. Pope. Miss. Gonna be able to find anybody. Eileen way out in the back, but look how much attention he's drawing. Boss and Popo both get eliminated, the cart glides in. Two he's, minutes on the clock now for the charge. He separated the supports from the tank line so they couldn't actually get the healing to the tanks that they needed. And then the Guangzhou charge tanks who still had that support killed it. And they don't need a D.Va per se with this composition. That's what they're missing, right? You know, why aren't other teams running the Doomfist? Because they like the utility that D.Va gives in terms of controlling high ground, absorbing Graviton Surge, absorbing damage in the Graviton Surge. But the Doomfist here is working out. Uh-oh! Rio gets the shatter he's been yeah, looking for. That is gonna be a pretty big one as well. Three members gonna be knocked to the ground. Boss and Popo both eliminated as a card. It's contested for a moment in the back, but will now start advancing yet again. The Longshore Charge want this so much. They want to break the losing streak. They're so close. It's looking like a time bank finish here. They can use the Meteor Strike to contest the cart against anyone who wants to tag here at the last moment. No grab for Baby Bay either. As long as they can get the first kill, this should be a done deal. Punch back in, Daco down to half. They're Charge. being a bit passive here. Yeah, waiting a little bit longer. They nearly have that grab. They nearly have a transcendence. Playing this one out patiently. Certainly are. Hoppa's looking for the flank to get that grab. Here's the engage. Yeah, punch it from the side. Uppercut good on the poke bomb. Side of the slam. Not gonna find a connection on the dogman. Stun on Eileen in the back. He's got the sound barrier shield to keep himself safe. Transcendence now burned. Hoppa gonna be waiting with that grab ready to roll. Uppercut comes through. That's gonna be the grab. Slammed down by Baby Bay. Looking for the kills, but he himself is going to be eliminated. Five ults online for the side of the charge. As the rally now expires, Shadow comes down from Rio. Cart still being contested with 25 seconds remaining, but Daco's gonna get popped out. And one after the other, the members of the Atlanta Rain will fall. Yep, grab, Meteor Strike, everything. The May Wall here, not gonna be enough. No, it will not. Cart breaks straight through that. And that is gonna be the charge, finishing Rialto with time in the bank. It's crazy to me that we saw Eileen make this Doomfist work on Rialto from start to finish and especially in some of the harder places to make Doomfist work where there's not walls. Because for those of you guys who don't know, when you rocket punch someone, which is the ability where he charges, you can see him charge the, the meter up and then he launches himself forward. The impact of the rocket punch does a decent amount of damage, but the majority of the damage comes from the impact of the wall behind whoever he's charging into. So when it's an open space, it's very difficult to actually get those single kills, which is what this entire Doomfist comp is, decide, is, is trying to do. You're not trying to poke people and then eventually wear them down. You're trying to get those solo kills on the support so whoever is isolated in a bad spot. Can be the Rhine, can be the Zenyatta. Um, and it's nuts. I mean, I, I didn't believe, I didn't think that with the Doomfist on this map, if he was going to stick with it, that it was going to find this much success. I mean, I didn't think that I would still be at the studio at this hour, but here we are, Wolf. <laughs> so we're just chock full hey, of surprises. Today. I hope we get that game five. I mean, I'm, I'm strapped in. I'm committed. I'm ready to go. I know the guys still here in the audience joining us live, very committed, sticking through it all. You guys are the MVPs. That's right. Joining us here on this Easter Sunday. And everyone, you know, online as well, yep. watching from home. For the defense here for the charge, by the way, just to point out comps, they're going to put Hoppa back on the D.Va, so happy on the Zarya. 
In Korea, Elo Mystic ran something similar with the Doomfist where they would swap their D.Va and their Zarya player. It's a very common thing uh, because, you know, you're running diva list to see this. Bonja Charge have kind of emulated what we saw from Elo Mystic in a lot of ways here. Sparkle being the Doomfist player in that case. For the rain, just going to be running Dogman on Zenyatta here. Better to do this than the auto on the attack. Oh, Baby May already set for a bit of a dip. Sure. Coming up with that nice boop. Puts him in the canal, but Rio oh, going so very low. They can keep him Shield alive, though. constantly raised, yeah. Healing is steadily coming through. So it seems like he's going to be all right in the long term. But doesn't get to swing the hammer much, which leaves him at 15% ult charge. Pogbo nearly there for the, the first Earth Shatter. He slept, though. This Thinking is a huge opportunity for them to commit in. They can get maybe a charge out of him. It seems like they're unable to do so. The cart's in the way. It's too narrow of a choke to fit a Reinhardt through there. Yeah. I mean, it's possible, but it's, you know, you don't want to risk it. Broad shoulder problems, you know? <laughs> yep. So instead, up on the high ground now for the Atlanta Reign, trying to poke down. Hart still being held at the corner. Hop up, being the one contesting at the moment. Now Rio starting to push forward. Shatter's nearly up. Nano's online. Heal deny. Thrown in, but not going to be able to catch anybody. But Popo's still going to be taken down. Now Erster gone as well. Oh, no. Sleep on the dog, man. I thought maybe they were going to corral around him. But well, this uh, is... they kill him off with some mercy. I mean, you can't get much more ahead in terms of ult economy than this. I guess if Eileen didn't use his rally, because he didn't know. He, how could he have known this was going to be such a dominant fight? If he didn't use his rally, they'd have that still. And then they'd have, you know, six ultimates here and positional advantage. Baby Bay being picked early is one of the reasons why he's so far behind Happy in terms of the grab charge. Yeah. I, I think mean, that's gonna... the biggest difference. It's one of the only differences that we have at the moment. Yeah. I think they're going to have to play him forward to get that last bit. Oh. He slept again. <laughs> Shu is playing like a god. He always does, doesn't he? Uh, he's been playing extremely well here today. This delays so much. This is so frustrating for the rain. They have high ground, but they can't move forward until he wakes up. He's now awake, and the charge have already disengaged. Gonna take a little bit of attack damage here in the back. Nano gonna be thrown down on Rio. Shatter gonna be blocked. He gets a shield up in time. Nako gonna be taking a nap. Then Pokpo just eliminated. Rio comes up with a triple for himself. Looking for a bit more, and he is gonna find it. Remember when we talked about Rio coming in for these nano engages? I talked about how way. it's yeah. I talked about how it's basically a dated strategy. It's not really meta anymore. It works so well in these chokes though, because no one can avoid you. No one can really get into position to flank you to stun you. You know, Briggy's not going to be coming from the side when there is a brick wall flanking you on either side. You're going to have a field day in that choke point there when the grab is up. Super well done. Now he's got another shatter. Pokemon's taking another nap. These sleep darts from Shu. Somehow bending and twisting their way around all the shields and the bubbles that the rain have. Just keeps getting connection after connection. Rally nearly up for Eileen, now has it online. Pops that one instantly. Maybe they throwing down the ground. Shatter comes in. Dako gonna be knocked to the ground right up into the front. The boop coming through to displace them. And there's no kills. As I said, no. Eileen will get taken down. Bob comes in, buys him a bit of space as they try to maintain control of the cart. The heal deny coming out from Shu is absolutely massive. And he's the keeping everyone alive. Are in shambles, and he is still keeping everybody alive, as you say. He's caught by the shadow though. Down. Catches two. Happy and Shu both knocked to the ground, but no one can go forward to kill them off. And Rio, he gets another kill on the Pumpo. And I'm looking at the, some of the players on the Atlanta Reign, on the player cams, and on stage here. Daco's looking real frustrated. Communication is at a minimal compared to the charge players right now who are talking fast. And it's a, you know, five Korean, one Chinese lineup here for the side of the charge. A lot easier to communicate than a 3-3, right? Total halfway split. You've got to keep your wits about you here, though. You've got to somehow win this fight using the trance to counter the grab. They're building a grab of your own. Baby Bay has to come up clutch. He cannot die here. All right, Shu. He's trying to be sneaky. Throws down that nano. Pushing for the heal tonight. He That's cannot kill us, anybody. That's going to be Dogman's healing for the Transcendence. Absolutely worthless under those members. Pumpo juggled way into the back. Going to be taken down. Can they even get to the cart in time? OT will be forced out. But it's Daco on as Lonesome just trying to buy some more time for the respawns to come through. He's been taken down. OT started the plummet. Can anyone tag this Masa? Barely gets there, but he's dead on arrival. hoppa has got the bomb. And that's just gonna be it. They hold him. No more points. Guangzhou says, you know what? We'll finish the map. That's it. No further ones added onto the record. They close out this series with a 3-1. And they break the losing streak. That's the biggest win for them. They're gonna take away from today is that that streak, the momentum that was against them time and time again, finally they've regained it. They take a 3-1 win here over the Atlanta Reign. They showed extreme mental fortitude in a long series. And I think we've gotta give 
an applause to all of these players who made it through such a grueling series. Uh, you know, it's it's a marathon. Whether or not you come in first, it doesn't matter. It's about finishing. Yeah. And, and everybody made it through on the opposite side. They played their style. They played the Doom Fist again. Eileen was on it. They put Rio in a choke where he could get value out of the Nanos. They knew exactly how to use their strengths to defeat the Rain there in the end in Rialto. And it was a very impressive display. We'll see how far they can go. Maybe they could turn that losing streak into a winning streak. Perhaps. Very good start to that momentum, but man, what a series. Let's go ahead, decompress a bit as we throw down to Danny on the floor. He's standing by with Hoppa. Thanks, guys. I'm here joined by Hoppa from Guangzhou Charge. Hoppa, what a series. Great job today. Now, with today's win, you have successfully ended the seven-match losing streak. My question is simple, Hoppa. How do you feel? 자, 7연패를 드디어 맞게 됐습니다. 하빠 선수 지금 어, 기분이 어떠신지 듣고 싶습니다. 어, 우선 7연패 하는 동안 다들 고생 되게 많이 해가지고 힘든 힘들었던 만큼 달콤한 승리인 것 같아요. Alrighty, so uh, yeah, we really suffered a lot, and it really hurt to be on that seven match losing streak. But uh, we kept uh, on going, and I think we really deserve this, right? 그 그렇게 말을 하셨죠 방금. 네, I think that's right. Alrighty, and also, you know, uh, with today's win, uh, you know, things are looking a lot brighter for you, Hapa and the Guangzhou Charge. But you guys do have about two weeks break. Um, how are you going to keep this momentum going with that break? Uh, 이번에 또좀 오늘 이겨서 좀 굉장히 좀 좋은 기세를 몰고 있지만은 또한 2주 정도 쉬게 쉬는 타임이 지금 있잖아요. 그럼 이, 이 쉬는 시간을 좀 어떻게 어, 잘 이용해서 좀 기세를 계속 몰아갈 수 있을까요? 어, 우선 7연패를 깬 만큼 그 2주 동안 저희가 오늘 되게 잘 준비해서 이겼다고 생각하고 그냥 휴스턴은 뭐 휴스턴도 잡고 이 분위기 이어가고 싶습니다. So uh, we really prepared a lot for today's match. So if we keep doing that and uh, if we beat Houston, I'm sure we could keep this momentum going. Thank you so much, Hoppa. Wolf and Achilles, back to you guys. Thank you very much, Danny. Good to hear from Hoppa. I, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I, I feel a bit relieved now that we're out of that series. It was absolutely crazy. It was really feeling like we were going to be able to make it to that map five. But being a player in that situation, I, I have no idea what that's like. But let's go ahead and see who our player of the match presented by Omen by HP is from this series, and there he is. It's in the wrong, wait. It's, it's the wrong jersey. The wrong jersey. <laughs> it's, like, Shu. it's like, wait a second, no. <laughs> we just had Hop on stage, yeah, that's a bit of a, a mess with your mind there, but yeah. Shu had a great start to the series on Busan, where he was able to shut down a lot of the plays of the rain with good bio grenades, and this really cool strategy they ran with long range DPS worked really well with the Ana. And then as we went into the middle of the series, right, when we head into Hanamura, a lot of the time he was the one who was making the big plays to get the trance up in time to save them and keep the pushes going. Later in the series as well, when we got to the very end, repeatedly sleeping Baby Bay on the Zarya, getting that bio grenade flanking there to make sure that they got the most value out of the Graviton Surge from Happy. He comes up time and time again. It almost feels like every time they win, he's player of the match, but he makes clutch plays consistent. I mean, you think about how long this series was. He only died 10 times as Zenyatta throughout the match. Crazy stuff, honestly, from Shu, from the charge. So a bit of momentum coming back in, a bit of wind in their sails. The close series yesterday versus the Spark. Now a victory here versus the Rain. Things looking really good for them. But guys, the series are done for the day, but we're not done yet. We still have the Watchpoint post show coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. Dogman is going to be a guest on there. And I hate, you know, kind of dunking on a player after a loss, but it's, it's time to pay up. Hopefully he's got a statement to make about this bowl cut nonsense. So we'll see in a bit. So stay tuned for that. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places. Hey man, what's up? You need anything for today? Nah man, I think I'm set. Big day today, man? Yeah, huge. Let's play some Overwatch. <laughs> 